Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We want to warn you that what we are about to discuss may not be suitable for young children. It's becoming an epidemic in America. In July, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that Georgia was one of the top states for sex trafficking. Our next guest is working to change that. She's dedicated years to helping young women and men start a new life after falling victim to this exploitation. Now she serves as the executive director of the Tabitha's House, an organization that provides service and resources to these survivors. Please welcome Dr. Margie Gill and survivor Elysia Bow Bowens to the couch. Thank you so much for being hey, here, ladies. Thanks, Very nice You're having welcome. you all here. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Dr. Margie, let's start with you. Um, we see, we hear about sex trafficking. We read about it. We see it in movies. I mean, it's all across the headlines. Now, why has this become such an epidemic? It has become an epidemic because we live in a time where people are keeping so many different types of secrets. Mm -hmm. And we hear children say all the time, you know, my mom said what goes on in our house stays in our house. And so people don't seek the help that they need. Yes. And then you have like the, the people in power who are doing the victimizing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a multi-layered, multi-dimensional problem that we see throughout communities. Yes. And I say it all the time that human trafficking does not discriminate. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in marginalized populations and mega rich communities across races. It doesn't discriminate. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about the facts because one thing uh, that we do know from all the research is that it's a multi, is it a multi-million or billion? A billion, billion dollar industry. Yes. 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 Talk about some of the facts. Some of the facts right here in the metro Atlanta area on any given night, 100 to 300 girls are sex trafficked. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that that one person has to turn mm -hmm. one trick because mm -hmm. that's what it's called they call it tricking um, they may serve 20 to 30 people in one night but that one girl is out doing this we can't really account for boys right. because there's not enough research we don't have the resources available and we're talking about children right now this doesn't include the women the men the people who identify as LGBTQ so it's, it's a problem. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, I want to uh, introduce Elisha uh, to the show. You were actually, you are actually a survivor. I am. Yes. So talk to us a little bit about how the nightmare began for you. Okay, I'm going to remove my peppermint. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it began for me at the age of 13. And I was um, targeted by not a man but girls mm -hmm. that worked in it they were sisters so they was into the um, business of sex trafficking and they approached me took me to the house of course it was drugs introduced marijuana alcohol and prior to me being there a guy comes in he had another girl and then he started to question me and just try to pick my mind and see where I were and I was 13 like mm -hmm. I said and once he realized I was so young he sold me to a guy that would take me at the age of 13. And, I, 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 and I, this just may be the ignorance of me, but where were your parents? Um, How were you able to have so much liberty at the age of 13 years old where someone who did not even have a bloodline tied to you could take you and sell you into uh, sex trafficking? Well, my home wasn't stable, mm -hmm. and my biological mama was at, um, absent. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with my father and my stepmother. So it was space. Mm -hmm. So with the neglect there, um, it allowed, allowed me to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking, trying to find myself. and Wanting to feel a need of being a part of something, to feel loved, to feel whole. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, as I patrol and I was actually right across the street from um, where I lived. It was like the apartments that I went in, but I lived in a community. So it was so close to home and it was it was very difficult, but you've come happened. out yeah. on the other side. <clears throat> and, let, and let's talk about how your life has changed since you have survived sex trafficking. Well, it has changed a lot, it shifted. And now, um, you know, I'm independent, I um, work 
um, you know, I do hair. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm establishing my license as well. So mm -hmm. it's it's been it's a struggle because every day is a battle, yeah. especially when you're dealing with financial, and you have to stay focused. So now that I'm out of it, you know, I just have to make sure that each day. I take life as it comes, yeah. and no matter what, I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. So it's in me, and I always seem better for myself. Mm -hmm. But this was like 19 years. Oh my gosh. 19 years 19 being years. in this world of sex yes. trafficking. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We're going to take a break and come back with more of their stories. So please uh, continue to stay with us as we talk to Dr. Margie and Alicia. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live, and we are continuing our conversation with the executive director of Tabitha's House, uh, Dr. Margie, mm -hmm. and also Alicia Bowens, who is a survivor of sex trafficking. And again, uh, for those of you watching, if you're just joining us, this is uh, content that is not suitable for young children. Uh, so, Elisa, I want to talk to you about at what, what point did you say, you know, enough is enough, you were in it for 19 years, and something happened in your life where you said, I got to get out of this? Well, I believe that I was um, resurrected because I was dead. Mm -hmm. And I was so far, like, gone and ghosted, spirited, because I didn't think that no one cared. So what woke me up, I was actually um, in New Orleans mm -hmm. and I was on Facebook and I heard this man and his name was Minister Louis Farrakhan. And uh -huh, he, was, yes. he was stating that, you know, women be, um, be patient. That was his word, be patient. We're getting ourselves together, meaning the men, and we're coming back to you. And I felt a sense of protection. And I was like, actually in the mix of about to commit, you know, a act, oh, okay. and I was like, oh, a sexual no. act. Yes. Well, it was more like robbery. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So when I heard that, it was just like instantly, and I looked. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. And the funny thing was that he was begging me to do it. Like, yes, you can. Please do it. And I'm like, you got to get out of my car. You have to get out of my car. And at that time, I thought about my children. And I was like, I, what am I doing? And I literally had to like pull him out of my car and drop him off at his room, of course, but I pulled him out, like, drop you off at the Hilton. And he's like, thank you. I'll email you some money. Of course he didn't, but I flew home driving fast. So you were about to rob this guy? Yes. Wow. And that mm -hmm. changed your life. Dr. Margie, let's bring you back into the conversation. How? Because of, the, because of the money that's involved in this, because it's so many layers to it. How do we combat this? What do, what do we have to do? Obviously, it, it seems to be one person at a time. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's, it's one person at a time, but our collective voice and being more aware, we can protect our children. Mm -hmm. Because what we see at Tabitha's house, we see children being trafficked by parents. We see spouses trafficking the other spouse or the, uh, the partner. We see a lot of things happening. Every six seconds, somebody is being exploited. And this does not just mean, you know, across the world. And we're talking, uh, we're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. Right now, probably less than a mile away, somebody is being exploited, turning sexual favors. Mm -hmm. And we can't continue to turn a blind eye. Yes. And yes. so what we do, we attend to the people as they come in. We don't just address one thing that presents. We look at the identities of the person. So if they have, like, Alicia just described her religious underpinning. Mm -hmm. She also described, she, she thought about her children. So we look at all these layers. She's a parent. She's a woman of faith. She has all of these things. So we look at all of those things and try to cater to wherever, wherever her need is at that time. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. We appreciate the work that you are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alicia, we are proud of you. Yeah, and we will you. continue to lift you up. And thank you so much for being an example because somebody saw you today and they will walk out of the life because they see your strength. Yes. So thank you so much for telling your story. You are appreciate it. For more information on Tabitha's House, please make sure you visit their website, tabithashouseint.org. Stay with us.